Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my programming with Python tutorial. And I already got idle up. If you didn't see part one, definitely go check that out first. Otherwise, you're going to be completely confused. Remember, from the last tutorial, on the right side, you're going to see everything executing, and on the left side is where we're going to be typing in our code. Again, we're going to start off here by listing the location of the interpreter that is going to interpret all of our Python code for us. This might be different for you, but that is what the line of code does. And today, I'm going to put a comment in here. We're going to demonstrate all the things you can do with integers. Also, something else, there's different ways to assign values to variables. What I'm doing here is creating three variables. First one is called x, second is y, and z. And I'm going to assign those the values of 1, 2, and 3. And you can see here, if I print these guys out, you can see them over here, 1, 2, 3. They printed right out, and if I, just to make this 100% clear, the value of x, look over here, and that's where 1 shows up. So those are just a couple things that I didn't cover previously. And how you actually create functions and we talked a lot about functions. You just saw print there. Uh, how you define a function in Python is with the three letters D, E, F, standing for define. And I'm going to create a function. It's called bool, E, X, Boolean example. And then inside of these braces is where you would receive values or variables that you want to be able to work with. And let's actually go in here and define two variables. And you want to put a colon. Remember, Python is all about white space. And what a Boolean is, is it's a variable that either has the value of true or false. No other values are allowed. And basically what we're going to do is call this function down below. And how we're going to do that just by listing the function name, just like we did with print and input in the previous tutorial. Except here, we're going to send the one value of false true, and the other one is going to be a false. Those values are going to be assigned right here. And if we print out and call the function name type for A, and then save this, and print it to the screen, you can see class bool. So it is of type boolean. Remember, they can either be true or they are false. And b actually has the value of false. Well, we can compare these two guys. Like, for example, let's print to screen a and b. And as an operator, what it's going to do is it's going to print out on the screen true if both a and b, meaning these variables, both have the value of true, which they don't. And you can see that it prints out false. Well, if you wanted to check if these guys, at least one of them had the value of true, you put the or operator in there, and you're going to see true pop up. Another thing you could do is use the not operator. And what it's going to do, you know here that the value of b is false, because that's what we pass to it. If you put not in front of one of these Boolean guys, it's actually going to print out on the screen the absolute opposite of wherever it is. In the future, you're going to see how this sort of stuff's useful, but I'm just sort of like introducing it to you. You by no means have to go crazy. And also, another thing we can do is to create Booleans based off of comparison operators, this being the greater than sign. Now, obviously, D is going to have the value of false assigned to it. And it does. And I mainly brought this up to go into the operators here real fast. This is greater than. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this. This is less than. This is less than or equal to. This is greater than or equal to. And this is not equal to. So those are the different operators that are available to you. But you could also take these guys up here that I showed you previously 
and do comparison operators like, let's say, if 2 is greater than 1, and do another comparison operator here, 3 is less than or equal to 3. I like to put brackets on here whether it's needed or not, and in this case, it's going to print out a true. So those are different ways that you can use Boolean values inside of Python. Now let's jump into what are called integers, which are just variable types that do not have decimal places. That's it. And we're going to create ourselves another function. This one's not going to have any arguments or variables or values passed to it. And let's just get rid of this guy altogether. And because there's nothing going to be passed to it, we'll get rid of that also. And there are a couple different types of integers that are available to you. First, they're just plain integers. And what should I do here if I don't want anybody to read this? Put a hash symbol so it's looked at as a comment. And also there's binary, which is ones and zeros. And then you have octal, which is base eight, and hexadecimal, which we're not gonna go into these, which is base 16. So those are the basic different types of integers that are available to you. And what I'm gonna do here is assign a value to the variable named x. And let's make it five. And then we're gonna create another variable and call it y. And we're gonna give it the value of two. And what we're gonna do is print out to the screen x plus y is equal to. And you could actually put the calculation directly inside of here. x plus y is equal to seven, five plus two, as you can see right there. But we could also go in here if you remember from last time, use print and put the curly braces in here. Curly braces again. And use the format function and put the variables x and y inside of there. And then close that off. And you can see here, I was able to pull the x, put it in there, take the y, throw it in there and then also do the calculation directly inside. And then see it makes more sense instead of x plus y is equal to seven, it would you would have five plus two is equal to seven. So it's just a little bit more interesting, I guess. We're gonna copy these guys. So I'm gonna show you all the other different operators that are available to you in regards to integers. And we're just going to change, I'm sure you know what the subtraction symbol does. This is multiplication. This is division. This is what is called modulus, which returns the remainder of a division. And this will actually give you x to the power of y. And then let's go make these all correct. Modulus to the power of y. And there is all the different types of calculations you can perform on integers right there. Now, if you wanted to actually see what binary is, I'm not sure if you remember from the last time whenever we used the integer function to turn a string into an integer, but you can also do similar things for binary, just so you know this. It's kind of neat. And we'll just perform Again, I'm using the binary function. Let's say we want the binary function of four, since that's what I typed. Doink, binary format, and it shows you what a binary four looks like. And you can do the same thing for hexadecimals and all of those other different things that are available. But let's say we want to see print. In this case, we're going to look at X up here. Let's say we want to create a float. What does a float is just a variable that has decimal places. So let's print out, print out the float version of variable X up here. And you can see it just adds a decimal place to it. And there's a whole bunch of other different functions that are available to you, like the power function, just to keep this short, X, Y, numerous different functions that are available to you. Z divided by three. 
And you can see there, it's doing that division down here on the screen. And if you ask it what type it is, let's just keep it simple. Again, you see over here, class float. Just means it has a decimal place. A lot of stuff is sounds really complicated, but whenever it comes down to it, it's really not all that complicated. And another thing that you, other different functions, and there's numerous functions, and I have a whole bunch of them listed. Let's say we wanted to find the, we actually wanted to round the value that is in here. We have to define, this is a function, again, we're passing it, this long, well, don't have it here anymore, but it was multiple decimal places. Let's say we're gonna just round that to three decimal places. You can see inside of Python, there's all kinds of things. And you can say, it did that for me right there. And if we wanted to use additional math functions that are available, sometimes we have to import. These are imported functions. We just type in import up here, type in math. Remember, no semicolons or nothing. And this provides us access to another library of tons of different mathematical functions. Now let's say we want what's called the ceiling. What this is gonna do, remember it's 33.333. 3, 3, 3. It's gonna provide the next number, next largest number. So it's gonna round up no matter what is here. And then of course, if there is a ceiling, there must be a floor. And you're gonna see that there as well. The final thing that I'm gonna talk about is Whenever you are defining variables, let's create a new float. See, I'm creating this really, really long number. And then I'm gonna print out to the screen, Z. Now watch over here. You will notice that it chopped it off. It chopped off the end of my 11. Now this might be different on your system because Every computer is different in regards to the accuracy of decimal places. Well, let's say you needed all of this accuracy. You actually could get it. There's a variable type called decimal, and this is how you would create it. Again, you'd have to come up to import, and we're, what we're doing is we're gonna pull in another library of functions that do not come standard, and these are called the decimal functions. So we have Z over here, and it's actually of type decimal, currently of type string though because of the quotes that are there. And how you would create a decimal, let's type decimal, dot, uppercase. And no matter how many decimal places you got here, this is going to maintain the integrity of the number of decimals. And it can prove it by looking over here. Doink, say it went the whole way up to 14. So those are a whole bunch of things that you can do mathematically inside of Python. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to cover strings. Till next time.